And so here we are, the brand new Lamborghini Urus. Now this is uh, this is quite an occasion. I feel incredibly privileged to be sitting in this car so early. Uh, the official dynamic press drives of this car haven't happened yet, uh, hence me being sat in a, a static car. However, I've got to say a massive thank you to Lamborghini for putting me in this car so early and to introduce you guys to it and talk you around it. So uh, this is it, the all new somewhat controversial Lamborghini SUV. I say controversial because Lamborghini for the last 30 years at least have been focused entirely on supercars. Uh, they need no introduction but the thought of them a few years ago launching a 4x4, a sports utility vehicle was almost crazy. Then we see the concept car, the aesthetics of that car I think uh, caught everyone's attention and now here we are sat in their very new SUV. Now I say for the last 30 years because actually Lamborghini did once upon a time make an SUV. It was called the LM002. That car predominantly was originally commissioned for military purposes but it eventually got put into small production I think of just over around 300 and 50 cars for civilian use and because it was originally developed as a military vehicle the civilians started referring to it as the Rambo Lambo which I think is an awesome name and here we are fast forwarding 30 years later in their proper SUV which they are having might I say a fantastic first start now less about the history what are we sat in right now so engine 4 litre twin turbo V8 641 horsepower sir now for an suv that is colossal it is second in power only to the jeep cherokee trackhawk so it'll be interesting to see which one of those two applies the power best to the floor when the inevitable comparison happens however being sat in this thing now you can already tell that in terms of premium suv feel lamborghini have really taken this to the next level. It is to touch everything, just to sit in it. It is a very special experience. And that for me was something that I hoped for upon the launch of this car. Lamborghinis, and if you follow this channel regularly, you'll know that I say often that Lamborghinis seem to do theater better than anyone else. And I'm thankful to say that upon opening the door on this thing, not even stepping inside it, the first thing that hits you is the quality and I would say the specialness really of the interior. They really have thoroughly rubbed the Lamborghini treatment all over it. Now let's not beat around the bush. This is a heavily Volkswagen Group influenced product. Um, it's sharing the same underpinnings as the Q7 and the Bentayga. However, I have to say, stepping into it, while there is this sort of um, undertone of uh, VAG Group feel about it, it is distinctly Lamborghini in every single way. That angular design language, which is prolific throughout Lamborghini these days, is very evident in this car. And so there is absolutely no mistake that despite there being some familiar switch gear from the Volkswagen Audi group in here, majoritively just being in it is beautiful. Back to that engine. So with 641 brake horsepower comes a 0 to 60 time of three and a half seconds. Now let's just put that into a bit of context. Um, I remember when Lamborghini themselves launched their Gallardo supercar only a few years ago. That had a very similar 0 to 60 speed. And today we find ourselves in this very practical four-seater, four-by-four SUV pushing out the same 0 to 60 times. So I cannot wait to experience the drive of this car. Also, it's running a twin turbocharged engine. So while in the past, Lamborghini cars have been naturally aspirated. I would imagine the assistance of the extra torque in this is going to make it an absolute wonder to drive. Now, don't forget, as an SUV, as a 4x4, this is a car that is very much designed to be driven and used every single day. The boot is huge, it looks practical, but still constructed with very plush surroundings. So your designer bag will look perfect amongst the resplendent Alcantara and leather trim boots. But what is unique about the Urus, which I can't talk about with confidence yet because I haven't actually driven it, but the idea of this car and what is sets it apart is the fact that Lamborghini are claiming that it is as good in the sand dunes as it is 
on a dynamic handling road. So the idea is that you can take this thing off-roading, plow it through the desert, do all of your practical utility functions that cars like this are typically all about, but then, dare I say it, you could take it to the track. Now don't get me wrong, this isn't a track car by any means, but Lamborghini are saying that they have blurred the lines between practicality and sportiness. So to be able to experience that, it's gonna be a wonder. Now I don't doubt it. In this day and age, I'm jumping into supercars, never mind SUVs that are reverse engineering that very process. There's supercars that you look at on paper and they're over 700 horsepower and they're not to 60 times are in the two and a half second region and you spend time in them and you could daily them. So if Lamborghini have taken that concept and done it the other way around and taken a platform that is dailyable, uh, a very practical and plush inside, but you can flick a switch and it turns into a raving performance animal. I am all for that. Now, speaking of performance, despite the fact that the underpinnings of this car are based on Volkswagen's MLB platform, which is the Bentayga, the Q7, the Porsche Cayenne, uh, obviously Lamborghini have applied their own tuning to it and they are promising that this thing is going to outperform all of those cars, which is something I guess you would expect, but it's nice to know that they're putting a lot of emphasis on performance to still reinforce the Lamborghini heritage. So, of course, 4x4. However, the fun doesn't stop there. It has a locking center diff, which is able to send up to 70% of the torque to the front or up to 87% to the rear. So maybe we're going to be seeing these SUVs going a little bit sideways at some point. Who knows? I just can't wait to experience it personally behind the wheel. Aesthetics. Of course, the majority of people so far have only seen videos of this car online, pictures, etc. I'm so happy to say that in person, the sculpture is awesome. It looks fantastic. It has a lot of presence. And right now, we are in the world's largest Lamborghini showroom out here in Dubai and even in this environment which makes you a little bit jaded it is still a wonder for the eyes but I would imagine that when you plonk this thing into the reality of the roads it's going to look absolutely stunning. Now I think the wheels that this is currently sat on are the 22 inch which looks fantastic but there is also going to be the option of a 23 inch wheel which are going to fill those arches beautifully i'm not sure how much that would compromise the ride quality however this does have air suspension so maybe it's going to be calibrated with those 23 inch wheels in favor and it'll still ride as supple as you might hope for let's talk about the interior so one of the standout features in this car is what i've started referring to as these control cylinders cylinders obviously because aesthetically they look like these two drums but this is where you engage the iconic flip switch like you're in a fighter jet, hit that engine start button and the car is coming alive and it then gives you access to all of these different driving modes. Now, I'm not sure I've ever seen so many driving options in a car before, but let's just go through them. We've got the Strada, Sport and Corsa. These are modes which you're familiar with in Lamborghinis such as the Huracan and the Aventador. The important thing is, despite the fact that we have already seen Corsa in Lamborghinis before is very cool that it is still in this car. So Corsa is typically Lamborghini's more hardcore focused driver's mode in the Huracan and in the Aventador. The fact that it's in their SUV is a massive tick in my box because it says basically that this thing is still has a mode that is very biased towards it grabbing it by the scruff of its neck and exploiting what that fantastic engine and drivetrain is all about. However, then things start to get interesting, and this is where this new realm of Lamborghini, which we've never seen before, opens up new driving experiences. So, we've got Sabir, Terra, and Neve. And also, we have three brand new modes never seen before in a Lamborghini. Sabir, Sand Mode, Terra, Earth Mode, and Neve. Forgive my poor pronunciation of Italian, but essentially, Snow Mode. So, this thing's breadth of ability on one cylinder here has six different driving modes on one option. So it's gonna be crazy to see the breadth of ability this thing has when it's out in the real world. Now, one other important thing to mention about the Eurus platform as a whole that hasn't really been touched upon too much is that we know that the Eurus is going to debut Lamborghini's first ever hybrid system. Now, this car doesn't have it. The launch car will not have it, but eventually Lamborghini will debut their first hybrid in the Eurus. So not only is this a significant model because it's their first, I would say, proper attempt at an SUV, but for the future of the brand, it's 
probably going to be their most purchased car ever. Uh, I know they've had to effectively double the size of their factory to cope with the demand of this car already. Uh, there's a distinct waiting list. I think out here is about 18 months, maybe even two years. And of course, it is ushering them into the future by applying their hybrid drivetrain to future models of this car. So for Lamborghini, not just the SUV world, for Lamborghini as a brand, it is a very significant car, uh, and they're launching it into a very competitive space. Literally, every man and his dog right now uh, is debuting an SUV. It's that product category that everybody wants, and I'm all for it. If this is a car that's going to inject a load more cash into this brand so that they can develop even better supercars, buy away, I can't wait to drive it. Um, aesthetically, I think it looks fantastic. I'm really hoping that despite this being a more conservative vehicle in the Lamborghini family, I'm really hoping that some people just go crazy on them and spec some of the wild colors that are currently in the Lamborghini palette. The options are endless. Conventionally, Lamborghini has always been about technical materials, but now we're seeing the lineup of open pore, grained woods, and the leather quality in here. It has this sort of weathered patina that is just a beauty to behold. Uh, to sit in this spec, as soon as I got in it, I mentioned it, it's an absolutely stunning environment, but I can't wait to see people go really heavy with the Alcantara. No doubt people are going to be matching their Urus to their Lamborghinis, so um, looking forward very much to seeing these cars hit the road. Now then, this is technically a pre-production car, so it's not absolutely final. However, so let's flick this start-stop button. Let's see what this engine and exhaust sound like. Wow. Yes, I would like one. As always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Ciao.